Hello everyone! Welcome back to another 2v2 Warhammer battle. This is going to be Bretonia and the Vampire Counts teaming up to fight a double Empire uh, army over there. For our army over here, we have a lot of Bretonian infantry. We have a front line of just men-at-arms because when facing double uh, Empire, men-at-arms are pretty cost-effective. They can trade in really well against all of the low-tier, even to slightly mid-tier infantry of uh, the Empire. So I brought four of them, and I'm backing up their leadership with two Paladins that are very cheap. They're only 500 because I took away all their skills. They are simply meant here to be another damaging source and a encouraging aura buffer for the men-at-arms. That's really all. They're, they're not really like hero killers necessarily in this one. Uh, behind them, we have one Foot Squire to take out you know, higher armored stuff like the great swords because these guys still train really well against those. And then I brought two men at arms here on the flanks, two normal peasant bows. Then we have the Fey Enchantress over here leading two questing knights and a Grail Knight. And then I also put the Green Knight because the Empire, most armies you see from the Empire, they don't really focus any on magical damage at all. So I figured Green Knight could be a safe choice. For my allies' army, we have the Devils of Swartzenhofen, which is surely mispronounced. And then two additional Vargeists over there. We have a Banshee being led by Vampire uh, Vlad von Karstein. Three Cryptors, the Sternsmen, the Kongenstein the Stalkers, and then the Varix Reavers. For the Empire player, you can see they took a very defensive high ground position over here. And they got some artillery to back it up. So the entire front line is just meant to hold. Is what my, my guess is you can see how it's kind of laid out right here so we have a bunch of swordsmen mixed in here a bunch of halberdiers and then we over here we have a bunch of spearmen i don't know the exact numbers but you can see right there behind them we have even more uh kind of low tier empire infantry i don't think they have any great swords whatsoever but the main part of their army is going to be in the artillery which they have two mortars yeah they have two mortars and then a two great cannons yeah two great cannons this uh, army is being led by Karl franz as well as oh that's i thought that was just a generic general Okay, two Karl Franz, one on a Griffin, one on a Pegasus, and then over here for their cab, we have a Reichsguard sitting in behind them, then we have another Demigriff, I'm sorry, Demigriff Knight here, and then we have two Outriders, one Grenade Launcher version, and then one normal version kind of out here, Vanguard deployed. Was there anything I missed? Their caster. They have a Celestial Wizard with all of those spells down there, as you can see, and a couple ranged units. Yeah, a couple crossbows and like, like a handgunner. Yeah. There's just a lot of icons right here. They brought a, a large army. So this could be a tough nut to crack because they have the high ground, they have a very defensive front line, but what I usually find is people who like to take a very defensive position, especially like this one, usually if you just kind of attack them from multiple angles at the same time, they can melt, like they don't really know what to do. So instead of just charging my infantry up like this in a straight line and just going into the center, which is clearly what they want me to do, um, I'm just going to march my forces over here and we're going to initiate a strike from over here while my cab is going to be over here with the green knight and my ally is actually going to be sending the Varric Reavers and all of their flyers to assist my cab force over here. And we're just going to hit them from two different sides is the plan. Now up here we are going to discover these outriders. I knew these ones were here because they weren't in cover. I did not, did not know about these Outriders, but we're just going to charge up. These Great Cannons are going to start facing towards our Cav, but I'm okay with that right now. We do have the Fane Enchantress with the Heal Spell if we need it, including the Green Knight. So right now I'm just trying to cut off the Outriders over here and cut them off over here, and then these Grill Knights are going to go up the center. Uh, but Outriders are still pretty fast, so it's going to be hard to catch them, and then that's when we're going to see the Demigriff Knights here in just a moment. Meanwhile, our armies are just marching up and right here, and I think... They're going to stay there for a little while as we were micromanaging our forces over here. We can see the Great Cannons are going to start coming over here to fire. Demigriff Knights we have found, and so they are going to try and charge one of our quest Knights. I'm trying to pull them out here and intercept them with the Green Knight to try and get rid of their charge bonus. Uh, but they are going to peace out or uh, start tearing my quest Knights a little bit here. But we are going to catch them with the Green Knights, and then we're going to get charges on them with the Grail Knights. Go around here with the Fane Enchantress and the um, other Quest Knight, and then come back with the second, the third Quest, second Quest Knight. Sorry, and we're going to try and take out these Demigriff Knights while we can. <coughs> Excuse me. Meanwhile, the enemy is going to be nailing us with two Great Cannons, which does hurt. But I am going to cast the Heal Spell here, and you can see we have terrorized the Demigriff Knights because of the Green Knight, and we are just we just shut them down um, pretty quickly. So that Demigriff Knight is out. We're going to try and catch these Outriders here. The other Outrider is going to be able to make it to safety. I don't want to actually charge into their infantry line with our cab right now. Now we're going to start moving up our forces again here soon. I believe we're going to have them situated right there. And now we're just going to charge these Outriders off the map. And I'm going to cast another heal spell on our cab as they're still getting hit by the Great Cannon. Took a lot of damage, but we did take out a Demigriff Knight. And we are going to take out these Outriders, which are more armor-piercing and can really um, tear apart my, my Knight Force. So... I wanted to make sure they were gone. And that's what we're going to do. 
We're going to escort them off the field and also try and get out of range of the Great Cannon. Cast another heal spell to heal what units we can, although we have lost a lot of models for this quest tonight. And even the Grown Eye has lost a lot of models too. Meanwhile, our front line is going to be moving up. My ally is going to be um, following me in. We're starting to get hit by the two mortar teams now, which can do really well against the Bretonian infantry if they hit. They can do really well. Right now, I'm just kind of keeping the green out here. I think I actually do move them up into this forest here soon. And then I'm going to wrap around my cat forest up like this, because the idea is now that we took out their Demigriff Knights, I'm assuming this side is clear. I don't think they would have any more you know, surprises. So we're going to try and threaten the enemy's back line and try and time it with an attack from the front line. Well, actually from their right flank here, our left flank with all of our infantry and see if we can maybe disrupt them a little bit is my plan. But you can see we're still getting nailed by the mortars and we're going to continue to be nailed by the mortars, but you know, they're taking out men-at-arms which are 300 and... wait, no this is a 250 unit. Uh, the 350 is the shield version, these are the unshielded version. So these are very cheap, they're just throwaway units, so I'm like, eh, I'm not in any real rush. So just going to get in position over here and I'm going to lead the charge with my green knight because they don't really have much to take it out. There are spells here that could but like this celestial wizard focuses in aoe spells which won't really do too much against um a green knight but besides that i believe that's the only damage they have that can get through him i think yeah i think that's it so i wasn't really worried about anything so i'm just going to kind of charge up here i wanted to try and get into these outriders but then i see an opportunity because i do have the um item that allows us to summon those spells so i'm just going to let the enemy kind of bunch up around the green knight and then I'm going to cast our spell to do some AoE damage there. You can see my ally is now charged up ahead with the three Cryptors. So they are taking all the Mortar Fire, which is fine for me. And we're going to now charge over into the side as our uh, Cav is going to just bypass this infantry force. And you can see... And you know, that's, that's kind of an okay amount of damage. And right now, the way that this hill is positioned, the handgunners really don't have a great angle on our knights when they get back in here. Um, so that's really good for us. And same thing with the crossbows, they're going to be hitting a lot of the trees, and this is just kind of a bad angle. And so now our frontline attack is starting with the paladins leading the charge here and here, and they're going to be backed up by the men-at-arms. And you're going to see, like, the men-at-arms for 250, again, they trade really well into low-tier infantry from most other races. They are super cheap, and as long as you can keep their leadership up, they can really do a lot of work for you. For our guys are going to now descend, I believe, on the artillery pieces and the crossbows. Actually, they looks like the Great Cannon too, or Mortar Team specifically. Green Knight is just going to sit here and tank Karl Franz for a very long time. I see the Reichsguard over here, so we're going to try and take the charge. We're all in the forest, which means we're both all suffer the um, same negative effects. And then I'm going to run our pole arms over here and try to get into these Reichsguard. We're trying to escape from my Quest Knights and my Grail Knights, so I'm just going to cast a heal over here, support the main line there. We're going to follow them in with the Grail Knights and again get our two men at arms of pole arms into these Reichs Guard. And then we're going to have the Peasant Bowmen who are focusing on, I think, a Halberd unit. They're going to change to these Grenadiers, or Grenade Launcher guys, so we're going to do that. Meanwhile, again, the, the Green Knights is going to tank all this damage. And now I'm charging into the back with the help of my allies' uh, flying force. We're just taking out all of their mortars and their cannons. And their front line is just being destroyed and terrorized by this Banshee, which was a good call. Um, and the Cryptors, which are just destroying their leadership. And then we have crushed their right flank totally with our combined forces. Meanwhile, the other, like, left flank and mid flank were mostly concerned with the Green Knight. Um, and you can see, like, a lot of their forces still trying to get into where the battle is. So in case, like, that, that may be really, really too fast. So we focused heavy on their right flank. One of the players was deployed all the way over here. So what I'm saying is we kind of did a 2v1 here briefly and it was enough time to take out the leadership and the cheap infantry of this player so by the time that the other player could actually move across this hilltop they're going to be fighting another 2v1 is what we kind of set up here and again the green knight is just doing an excellent job just taking all this because that's what he can do and he can deal a lot of damage too in return and you see the handgunners over here they have a, sh a really bad line of sight like look at the hilltop it people assume hilltops are great and they can be but it can really screw up handgunners specifically who need a direct line of sight meanwhile my, my peasant bowmen are just out here free to do whatever they want because we destroyed the reichs guard with our uh, grail knights and then our two men at arms and pole arms and you can see we just have everybody in the route so right now i'm just issuing attack orders to try and escort all of these units off the field and since they deployed all the way back here on the hilltop the actual um edge of the map is right here so they're not really going to have much time to actually get the leadership back and these this all this cheap infantry is mostly just going to be right off the field as soon as we're going to chase them out Right now I'm trying to get the Green Knight out of here and I'm going to cast a heal spell on him. It is an AOB heal spell so it's kind of a waste but I didn't want him to die quite yet because he still has a lot of hit points that he can regenerate. Meanwhile I'm just going to use my Cav out here and just destroy more units that are coming back from routing all these cheap swordsmen. You can route almost instantly whenever charged by Quest Knights and uh, Grail Knights at this point. 
You see the crossbows now are starting to fire into the uh, Cryptors. Celestial Wizard did something right there, I'm not sure. Um, getting the Fae Enchantress over here to try and assist the Green Knight and try to get more infantry over here to assist the Green Knight. Peasant Bowmen at this point are firing into the Handgunners, I think. And now I'm going to get our Quest Knights over here and try and finish them off. And the Cryptors and my allies, uh, Fear and Terror Army right here is just destroying the meager Halberdiers that are sent against them, casting another spell here with the Fae Enchantress. But these units are going to be terrorized by the Green Knights, so they uh, aren't really going to get hit by that. I got need to pull back my men at arms so they don't get hit by that. They got hit by a little bit. And I see my allies just chasing off units with their flying, and we are we just we surrounded that hilltop and we pounded the fuck out of them, man. And I gotta say, it always feels good to destroy a defensive position like that. It, it it's just something special. Um, about destroying that type of position. But in, but good game to everybody. But it feels really good. Felt really, really good. When you just see all that cheap infantry just starting to do chain routes, oh, it's such a good feeling. You're like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, 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 that's the risk. Like, it looks daunting at first. When I started that match, I was like, oh, okay. Four artillery pieces on a hill protected by whole bunches of infantry. But we have fear and terror on our side. And Empire Infantry, if it's not great swords, I mean, I guess Halberdiers can hold up a little bit longer, but like they relied heavily a lot on swordsmen and spearmen, and those are not that tanky, uh, especially when trying to face off against Fear and Terror units. Their leadership usually cannot hold up, especially since their leadership was mostly concerned with my Green Knight to try and take him out, which was perfect. That's why I really didn't move him after that initial engagement. I'm like, look, man, if Karl Franz and this Warrior Priest wants to fight my Green Knight way over here, I am okay with that. Because they do not do, do magic damage, so he's just going to tank for days, and he, and he did. Uh, so you can see the kill count here. Again, the men-at-arms trade very, very well. In fact, I think men-at-arms may be better than swordsmen. Not just because they're cheaper by, what, 150? Um, but I think even, like, cost out aside, like, I think they trade better into swordsmen than swordsmen do into men-at-arms. I think. Again, as long as you can keep their leadership up by, the like, these paladins. The paladins... Rex Havoc too. Green Knight did amazing. Uh, men at Arms pull arms destroyed those Reichs Guard. Foot Squires went in, and uh, I think they also destroyed some Reichs Guard, and I had them engage against Halberdiers, who were chasing my knights. Speaking of the knights, the Ground Knights didn't actually get to do too much. They did help destroy Demigriff Knight, helped destroy Reichs Guard, and then I think I just had them out um, destroying Swordsmen after that. But the Quest Knights did really well. For Glutton, 52 kills on Vlad von Karstein is great. The front line, which I, I guess is just two units. Yeah, I guess that's all. Um, Sternsman's 24 kills is pretty good. Conicide Stalkers. The thing is, though, like, by the time they got into the battle, like, the Cryptors had already done so much work, and the Banshee was terrifying everybody, and my, you know, my front line was there, too. So they didn't get too much time to shine, but still, uh, let's see, Varric's Reavers, 33 kills. I'm not sure what happened to them. I think they were with my cab, and we were killing the Demigriffs. Maybe not. I'm not, not entirely sure. Uh, Flying Force, though, did excellent. They helped destroy, uh, I believe, the Outriders. They got into all of the artillery in the middle, and they just wreaked havoc on those. So, yeah, nice, a uh, nice, like, supportive build here, which is kind of what this is. A lot of monstrous creatures to support my Bretonian infantry. And that's how they played it. They deployed behind my infantry, and they just kind of we went together. You know, team teamwork. Uh, let's see. For FYC, I think this was the Carl Franz on the Griffin. 13 kills is not that amazing for poor Carl. You saw what happened to the Demigriff Knights. The Halberdiers did okay. Um, and the Great Cannons got an okay amount of kills before the Flying Force got into them. And then Captain Spicy was the one who had all the Swordsmen and the Spearmen, but they just, they melted um, under the weight of the Vampire Counts and the Bretonians there. The Reichsguard got charged in the forest and then tried to escape the charge. They got more damage taken there, and then they just got surrounded by pole arms, so they didn't get to do anything. Mortars got, oh, and the Mortars also got, kind of got shut down, but yeah. You can't really rely on Empire Infantry holding out unless they're flagellants. Halberdiers can hold out for a little bit, and then, of course, Great Swordsmen can hold out for a bit. If you don't support these guys with some kind of leadership buff, like having heroes nearby, you saw right there, like, they will melt pretty quick. They're, they're not great infantry. Um, I think this army relied a little bit too much on it, but yeah. Good game to everybody, Glutton, FYC, and Captain Spicy. And let's go watch a cinematic view of the battle. Post -haste. Oh, so this is a really cool map. I always enjoy playing on this map. The lady wins. By the way. Full team. Swiftly. Moving up base. Hastily. For our lady. Mm. 
Great cannons do hurt though. Like a suicide mission for these poor demigod knights, though. Like they were heavily outnumbered. I, I don't know if this player just thinks they're invincible, and I mean I, that's kind of easy to assume because like one on one demigod knights can just wreck so many things in this game. But against this much, like they didn't really have much chance. The poor kitty cav is severely outnumbered, fighting a lot of good units. Demigurf Knights are not invincible. Pretty accurate. Oh, punks taking out my grill knights. Poor Petonia, mother truckers. Die for Petonia. A noble cause. Actually, were those mortar teams just targeting the Cryptors from the start? Interesting. I mean, in theory, mortar teams can do pretty good, I guess. Like, there's just not that many models, though, and they also reach in. Oh. I think I would have probably just focused on the infantry. Maybe like the foot squires or the uh, peasant bowmen. Let your crossbows take care of the, uh, the cryptors and your great cannons. I tried to get him out of the blast range because I thought that could still hurt him. But it didn't really do much. I think he got kind of nicked by it, but not much. Then all this Air Force just destroyed their squishy bits. Oh, I didn't even notice that one's death. Alright. Two, at once! Use a 
Many. It's just we broke their leadership and then they just win. That chain route. Yeah, when you're facing off against vampire accounts, flagellants are a much more trustworthy, um, or I should say reliable, unit to have as a front line, because they are unbreakable. A little bit more expensive than swordsman and spearmen, obviously, but against vampire accounts, I think worth the cost. Our Franz, this warrior priest, really wanted to kill this green knight. Awaken, my vengeful brothers! At once! Clear out! Attack! Quit now! The thunder! I am talking! <laughs> and there we go. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this battle, taking the hilltop, and I will see you all next time. Take care.